Hello everyone, welcome to Telling Tales. I am Matt, your Game Master for the evening, and we are playing, as we're always seemingly playing on uh, Wednesday, we're playing Simbaroom, the dark fantasy game from Free League, uh, recently translated into D&D form, though that's not what we're playing. Um, yeah. Hi, we're partway through Wrath of the Warden, which is the first part of a very long-running um, official campaign from Free League, and we're having some good fun. We've been killing some lizards down in a hole in the ground. Everything's everything's great. Uh, before we get into that, before we start introducing players and the like, I'm going to do my usual promo. There's a bunch of links down below. Those links include uh, Twitch and YouTube. You're watching on one of those, uh, I hope, unless someone's stolen our video and randomly put it on Daily Motion. Um, but why not check out the other? Why not check out uh, either of the ones you've not done, whether you want to watch us live on Twitch or uh, access our vast catalogue of video on demand stuff over on YouTube? Then please, please, please do that. Do that thing. Uh, there's also links to social media, to Discord, and to Patreon. They all do the things you might expect. Check them out if you're interested. Um, we run three regular weekly series here on YouTube. Mondays is um, has been until recently Shadows of Esterin, and Shadows of Esterin will return um, in the new year, I think. But for the next couple of weeks, uh, Monday is going to be a very special two-part um, short series that Johnny's running of... Um, it's uh, Call of Cthulhu, which regular viewers will know he dabbles in a fair bit, but this is a very different one. It's uh, Call of Cthulhu set aboard a modern or near future space station. Um, so yeah, that's going to be that's going to be real good fun. Uh, Getting on that uh, starting this Monday, uh, and then concluding the following Monday. And it's got a kind of, uh, it's mostly Monday crew people, but I think John John is in it as well, um, and Matt is making a return and stuff. So yeah. Get involved in that. Uh, Wednesday nights is Simbroom. You know that. Uh, Thursday nights currently is the Cincinnati Chronicles, which is a anthology series uh, set in the world of darkness. We've just finished our Vampire the Masquerade arc, and we're kicking off our Wheel of the Apocalypse arc tomorrow. So if your thing is uh, eight-foot-tall furry eco-warriors, then um, get, get involved in that tomorrow night. Um, maybe you don't even know that that's your thing at the moment. Maybe uh, that's part of you that you you don't know about until now. But either way, watch tomorrow night and um, and enjoy. So uh, all of those start, incidentally, at 8 o'clock GMT in the evening. Yes. Um, we also run uh, one-shots on the first weekend of every month. The next one of which is our first sequel one-shot, uh, as voted for by our wonderful, wonderful fans and maybe a few random passerbys as well. Um, and that's going to be the Alien uh, tabletop role-playing game, also from Free League. Um, our first one of those was back in February, called A Place of Burning, and this is the uh, follow-up this Sunday. So that's Sunday, the 5th of December, starting at 3 o'clock p.m. on this very channel. It's on our schedule, uh, and that will be called A Congress of Sorrows, um, as someone pointed out on the Discord, a typical upbeat title from me as a GM. But that's it. That's the stuff. So let's start bringing on our players for Simbaroom, and we can start recapping what happened last week. So let's kick off with Stephen. Uh, Stephen plays Elindra, um, former Templar novice turned sellsword. Hi, Stephen. How are you Hello. doing? Hello. Good evening. Yeah, I'm good. Um, so we started uh, last week uh, in a hole, specifically uh, in a, uh, a kind of room or, or chamber filled with kind of lava and boiling water and yeah uh, like a hot hot spring hot, hot mossy spring. spring that those were the words i was looking for thank you uh and filled with what i can only describe as lizard things um although we missed it certainly what we described them as so yeah not dogs at all no no, although there was some confusion at first. There was. Uh, so, uh, yes, we rolled straight into a combat um, at the start of last session, which was um, a, a fairly drawn-out, brutal affair. They were um, they were very well-armoured and quite difficult to damage, but um, Elindra wailed in with the sword and finished off two or three of them. And I think... Yeah, t t two, I think, but the third was also... Have it a go with the third one. Yeah. Um, so between between that and uh, and the, the 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 efforts of others in the player party and some of the uh, the NPCs that were with us, we managed to eventually dispatch those. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, um, to, to relatively little loss as well. A couple of you had some some bites and scratches, and one of the one of the city guard who's down there with you was um, quite badly wounded, but she's still alive. Um, yeah, we had so, an amazing run of defense rolls, even though the yeah. attacks took a while. Yeah. You really did, and obviously, like for the NPCs who weren't as proficient as you, they were also kind of like theurgs and. Uh, stuff there. Some magic was going on from the likes of Furia, and some um, horrific damage was being done by Serex Atio, just picking the things yeah, up and stabbing he's a, them. He's a monster. <laughs> he is indeed a monster. Um, so yeah, that was uh, where we started out. And I say started out, but that was about the first hour and a half last week. So um, the rest of these four recaps you're about to have are going to be chunky stuff, guys. Um, so <laughs> let's start with that by bringing on our next player, John. Uh, John plays Sir Aaron Dar, uh, last scion of House Dar, lone, lone son of a forgotten house. Um, there he is. Look. Look at him go. Um, so, Aaron, what happened next? Uh, after that, we left the hole because it was almost bedtime. And Alindra had taken... <laughs> almost bedtime. It's, it's almost, almost bedtime. bedtime. I can't we stay in the tired. dangerous sinkhole anymore. We didn't want to stay there in the dark. Um, uh, Alindra uh, waved around a lizard head that she'd removed from the rest of the carcass. And everyone... I, I think she's now going to try and get Alindra Dragon Slayer. Uh, going as a, a nickname. It's it's that or Dog Slayer. I'm torn between the two. Yeah, yeah. One's um, probably more attainable than the other. Yeah. So I mean, that's it. You kind of headed headed back to the access to the surface and climbed up. I, mean, I think you've even gone beyond. I think Mike might need, not even have a recap to do now. That's oh, no. how quick our recaps go. Um, but let's bring him on anyway because he loves it. Um, and also, it would be weird. To, you don't get a recap, so you're not coming on this week. Mike. Um, <laughs> Uh, Mike plays Anton, uh, Theog of Prios, uh, Clutch Flailer, and um, Flail Clutcher. Um, yeah. Very good. Hi. Very good. Um, um, is there anything to add to the, the bit that John said? I mean, not really, other than we were sort of ushered somewhere else just uh, soon after leaving the sinkhole. Absolutely. And I will leave it there. So yeah. it's and to, to talk about where that horses. was. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a definitely a combat focus session uh, session last week. But to talk about where you uh, ended up spending the night, let's bring on Chris, uh, who plays Steo, um, a former infantryman and town guard turned um, well sellsword, like you all are, the group's lovable curmudgeon. Um, lo yeah, so, love mudgeon. Um, we were informed that a party had been. Uh, or, or as I like to call it, trap had been laid for us at a uh, local kind of um, another barbarian tavern. Um, not not the one we usually frequent, but one maybe. Yes, I, will, I I will find the name of it as well because it does um, it does have a name, um, as one would imagine. Um, it's something to do with the 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 Odav uh, clan. I know that, but you carry on, and I'll 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 cut in later. And the whole place had been booked out for us, so it was quite the do. Um, Steel. Very nervous about this whole, like, th th doesn't like this extended group, given that at least one member of the extended coterie has said that they want us all dead, um, or at least threatened as such. Uh, but we went anyway, um, never turned down a free meal, and we did have a lovely free meal, had a little bit of kind of chat, and um, it actually felt a bit like kind of a corporate Christmas do, if I'm going to be totally honest with you. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, but uh, the expectation was we could have a bath and stay there the night as well, which Dio was initially very hesitant because, once again, this was an, a trap and we were all going to get murdered during the night. Um, eventually, Sounder Minds talked me into um, uh, staying here, but we'd post a watch in order to keep me a little bit happy, uh, which turned out to be completely unnecessary as we all had a very sound night of uninterrupted sleep. Absolutely. And then in the morning, um, there was someone to have a conversation with. And let's bring on our final uh, player, Sam. He plays Askarai, our changeling scout and ranger and um, shapeshifter who, who never really shifts shape. Um, yeah. Hi, Sam. I sometimes shift shape. You have been known to shift shape. <laughs> you don't get called a shapeshifter without occasionally shifting shape at the very least. Um, I'd true. say he's a, he's a ship, 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 ship shifter. A, sh a ship, shaf <laughs> ship shafter? No. Ship, 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 ship,
Um, so yeah, I, I think Askra was on last watch to avoid us getting uh killed at, at this inn. Um, and Marvello, Captain Marvello of the guard, came to the door and he just wanted to have a quick talk with us. Basically, he had heard about things that had happened uh in Glimmervan, um, and like other he'd just heard of what we'd been up to which all seemed very strange to him um and was questioning like why wh like what what were we doing and we kind of explained to him uh even though our actions had seemed kind of erratic um it was just we were just investigating the sinkhole and that had led us in a few different directions and um like that that is the reason why all these things had been happening but we were still kind of on this just doing our best basically um and we talked to him a little bit about kind of the cults the cults being after us he did confirm there was an assassin in town i think um which had been also been told to us by the elf who, who said the assassin was here to kill us but you know i guess we'll see um and then i think the final thing and maybe like the most promising lead other than being in the sinkhole was he mentioned the red eye um, who had also been mentioned by the elf um, and said that they were kind of a cult operating out of Blackmore, which is a sort of out of town slum. Um, yeah, like slum slash refugee camp slash go goblin village. Yeah. Um, and they, he also confirmed that they were, but he basically confirmed that they were um, the same group. Um, who we encountered briefly, or like some of them we encountered briefly by Jack and Tart doing some kind of suspicious stuff, but we didn't really figure out exactly what. And so we um, we basically agreed that after, uh, if we survive the sinkhole, we'll go and uh, help him investigate these these red eye people and see what's going on there. Yeah, and I think he he was like, you know, if if they're bothering you, come help me clear them out. I've wanted to clear them out for a while. Um, and I make, can maybe help you in your endeavors in future if you actually tell me actually what you're doing. Because um, you were a bit, a little bit sketchy around it. But um, yeah. that's fine. That's fine. So with that, I think we can safely pick up more or less where we finished. Um, uh, you hear uh, a few moments later, you hear Marvello call from down below in the... Um, the general area of the um, of the tavern, which is called Odavakar, as I have looked up, um, and it seems like people are gathering downstairs to to travel back to the sinkhole for an, another day, um, safely tucked up in the uh, dangerous caverns beneath Thistlehold. Collect my stuff and head down. Um, if everyone's going to do that, you arrive in that uh, rather large, well-laid-out common room again. Uh, there is a breakfast laid out, and people are already eating it. Um, everyone here, it, here is as you'd expect to be, although you, you do note uh, that uh, Marvello is over near the door, kind of like checking over the equipment of a couple of new city guard, um, kind of like, you know, checking that their swords are in good condition and, and that their armor is strapped on right and stuff. Um, you notice a couple of, obviously the, the city guard who was wounded, she's she's not here. She's been taken away um, to the, the Sun Temple or some such for, for healing. Um, but uh, another couple of the city guard aren't here as well. And um, you definitely get the impression it's, the, it's like a younger couple of them who like maybe Marvello has decided to rotate out um, them after a, quite a quite a traumatic day, uh, and there's a couple of more more uh, seasoned looking city guard there, kind of just being checked over by Marvello. Everyone else is there who'd expect uh, who stayed here overnight. Serex Atio, um, the uh, the junior theurgs, Ganderald, and the uh, the younger order magica mages. Uh, I think that's everyone, right? Right? Yes, because obviously Yagaba and Elfeno and um, Furia, yeah, they're not staying here. Um, so, uh, with that in mind, uh, moments later, you, you can help yourself to the, the breakfast. It's a very kind of traditional um, kind of like uh, clan food. Uh, there's lots of berries and um, grains and kind of, you know, a very kind of a, a very sweet salad um, sort of tasting thing with some eggs as well. Um, yeah. So it's just kind of laid out and we can just kind of take the food, yeah? 
Yes, Chris. Okay. That's right. Seems like it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a platter. Okay. Okay, that's fine. So is it all or... is it all on like like one <laughs> serving okay. surface or is it like on a table with each with their separate plates and like serving? Any plates? new viewers are going to be so baffled at this. Look, I called something a buffet once in a fantasy <laughs> game, and now they won't let it go. Yeah, it's a because buffet. You keep it's a breakfast mentioning buffet. Buffets. It's a breakfast buffet bar. Are you happy? Barbarian <laughs> breakfast buffet bar. Chip is very pleased with this right now. <laughs> the name of my new post rock album. Look. <laughs> It's a very nice breakfast. Let's move forwards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can you can eat your fill. Um, don't forget, by the way, I don't think we did any like uh did we did anyone have any toughness loss after the end last time? Because obviously like people were were healed by Elfano's um holy aura, right? So I had lost two. That's okay. Wrong. Um well let's not mess around with like healing and stuff. Um let's uh let just everyone re recover one toughness because if you you've lost any for the for the overnight and that's that's be fine. I know you're down one, Myron, but like I feel like going to get healed for one toughness might. Yeah, I, uh, you just actually, feel a bit bruised. I just looked and I was actually only down one, so it doesn't. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. It's all good. Um, so after breakfast, um, Marvello calls for everyone to to get ready and um, walks out of the front door. Um, up until now in this story, you've been in uh, you know mid to late autumn, and I think I've described how the weather is just foul um, this year, very overcast, very drizzly, because uh, I said, you know, right at the beginning, we said there was that tension in the air of this will hold, right? And you feel that again as you step out onto the streets. Um, but uh, it's even worse now because it is absolutely pouring down. Um, it's like walking through water with holes in it. Um, kind of a, a really um, thick, unpleasant, cold rain hammering down off the streets, the kind where you're getting splashed with just the rain hitting the cobblestones in front of you, um, as well as uh, coming down on top of you. And everyone bundles up with what they do have uh, and makes uh, kind of makes their way trudging through the streets, not too far um, to where the sinkhole is in... Uh, in uh, sort of just just around the corner, essentially. Um, as you approach there, you see that there are um, far less people here today than there were yesterday. Probably a because the novelty's worn off, and b because of the horrible weather. Um, but as you, there are still a fair amount of people, some of them kind of holding large kind of furs over themselves, like families who are stood at the edge of the barricade. Um, and as you uh, kind of trudge and are allowed through, there's some. Um, there's some cheering and kind of uh, voices calling, you know, shouting out enthusiasm. There is a d distinct little chant uh, from a corner of the crowd of something along the lines of dragon slayers um, with, with Alindra's display of the definitely not dragon head um, yesterday evening. Um, and as you kind of move through the crowd and the barricades part for you uh, next to the sinkhole, obviously a copious amount of water just washing down into there, um, kind of not just the rain, but obviously where the rain has fallen, it's all kind of surfing and, and, and pouring down the side of the escarpment there, turning it into what probably will not be a very pleasant descent um, where you're going to get soaked in water through what is essentially a muddy waterfall. Um as you walk over to the group, the, the the kind of more senior members of the expedition um, are there already, and you can see that um, as you approach, Elfano is standing there, kind of flanked by his usual entourage of um, kind of senior theurgs and novices. And as he turns to you approach, he he turns and says something curtly to to his entourage and waves a hand. Um, and all these theurgs who are kind of tucked up in very thick bundle cloaks kind of like a couple of them don't look too happy about it but most of them seem fairly comfortable and they kind of undo the uh the knotting on their cloaks and take them off and, and kind of ugh, stepping forward through the rain hold them out towards the city guard who don't have marvello's got a cloak but other than that they don't have these kind of large chunky robes um and a couple of them kind of hold them out to you guys as well i don't know if maybe you do have i could see some of you definitely have it Askari almost certainly is is perfectly bundled up um how about the rest of you i don't and i'm not going to take one Okay, yeah, I, I think I'm gonna gonna take the opportunity in the rain just to kind of look bedraggled and dramatic. 
Um, sure. It, it occurs to me uh, with this is like a slight retcon if this is okay with you, Matt. Uh, we didn't mm. specify what I did with the lizard thing head. I probably won't have wanted to take it back to the, the pub last night. I think I'm happy but, with Furia taking it. Okay. I was gonna say, like, if there was anybody that was particularly interested in it, I would have I would have given it to Furia. Fair oh, yeah. I would have just put it on a spike or something. But... Yeah, yeah. Furia almost certainly kind of uh, was happy would happily take it off you and take it back to the tower for dissection. Sure. Um, yeah, uh, and Tom, Aaron, any, is, is anyone taking one of these big bundle cloaks from the uh, the Theurgs? I don't. Uh, I don't think that Anthem is. I think that he's probably already soaked through and sees little point in taking one. Sure. I I think this is a very kind gesture, but I would not deprive a priest of their cloak. Fair enough. Um, the city guard definitely would, um, and they kind of quite gratefully take them and bundle them around them, and and kind of take some blessings from the theurgs there. Um, Marvello kind of turns around and says he's a quite a few feet ahead of you, and he says something, but you don't really hear it through the drumming rain. Uh, but then he starts striding towards the the ropes that are still tethered on the way down. So what he's saying becomes pretty apparent. Um, yeah, everyone starts moving towards those. Um, I don't think we need to talk about, because before we talked about, like, well, where do we go down? I don't think we need to do that. But what I would like is some rolls, I think, because making your way down in this yeah. horrible state um, is, uh, yeah, not great. Um, I would like you to make, and this is your choice, uh, guys, uh, either a strong or a quick roll. Um, and both of those are going to be on a, a probably a minus two, I'd say. Ooh. Yeah, that's fine. This is my role to determine if elderly procs this time, so I need oh, to get Oh, yeah, that level. too. I get 19, so I am Oof. on minus one for all subsequent dice rolls today. You know, Lovely. it's the weather. It makes the joints ah, yeah, stiffen yeah. up. Yeah. Um, how uh, how about uh, Anton and Askarai and Aaron? Nope. No, nope. no. Is that all? What loss for everyone there? It's hard roll. <laughs> you're on. You're on mute, Mike. Sorry. You made it. Yeah, yeah. Roll the two. We are in topsy turvy land, <laughs> folks. Um, so there we go. And Tom um, nimbly shinning down uh, down the, the the wet rope underfoot. Like I say, it, it's like going through a muddy waterfall. Um, it, not only is it running down the scree, but it also is splashing off that incredibly uneven surface. And the whole experience when you when you all get to the bottom, you're going to be um, extremely wet and extremely cold, um, even more so than you were on the surface. And probably your um, clothes and your hands will be covered in like gravelly wet wet gravelly soil um although for each of you who failed so everyone but anton um I, I would like oh oh you passed sorry sorry steven um so steo aaron and Askarai, the three of you will have taken um you know whether maybe you slipped and got some rope burn on your hands whether you like came down hard on an ankle or something like that i would like you to roll um a d3 um and take that much toughness without any armor save, please. That's a one from Chris. Two for me. One for you, two for Askarai. Sounds like maybe maybe Aaron and, and Steel kind of banged a knee or, or like got, got rope burn, whereas Askarai, maybe you turned an ankle or something like that. Um, yeah, and you all make your way down to the bottom, as does everyone else. A couple of maybe the, um, the, the novice Theurgs and maybe a city guard or two have sort of also like rough descents, but no one manages to fall, um, which is the main thing. Um, and when you reach the bottom, you can see that those novice theurgs and Euphrinda who set up um, sort of the base camp last time are doing the same again this time, but way down the slope, um, away from where the rain is kind of pouring directly on top of this. And the whole kind of debris uh, mound has become like, just all these little rivers and rivulets running all the way down to the the interior of the cave. So it's it's going to be a bit more tricky to get around this central area today for sure. Um, yeah, I lean over to let's say Steo, who's the closest to me, and say, "What do we do if the caverns flood?" Um, 
I, I am not. I, I've worked very hard for this armor, so I intend to drown. I think that's fair. Okay. Um, as you uh, as you kind of come down to that base camp, the Theurgs are handing out kind of small. Um, little, basically like uh, alcohol, you know, like small, not large uh, drinking, uh, what are they called? Drinking skins. Not large, copious drinking skins, but kind of small um, kind of packs of uh, some kind of spirit that they're passing out to everyone um, in presumably an attempt to try and kind of warm people up a bit. Um, some, they don't know their science. Um, but yeah, it may feel warmer, so... I'll have some of that. Yeah. Presumably uh, we've got some torches set up down here as well. Yeah, that, some of the ones from last night are still... I mean, they're still in the ground. They just need to be relit and kind of re-soaked in oil and relit. And they so, seem to be going around and doing those, kind of nervously looking out in the dark as they um, as they do so. But they don't range too far down there, so they're all within so what's, view. So with all this extra water, what's the condition of the existing streams and is there any new water hazards? Um, you kind of, if you go down to the edge of the, the like scree, which I'm absolutely fine with you doing to so check it out. Um, they're definitely swollen, um, but not, not significantly. So like, it's not enough water cause the water is going everywhere. Um, so it's not enough water that those little kind of very small little streams are going to like be, you know, a big, uh, big thing. It's, it's definitely not going to be hazardous. Um, it's just an extra, just one more pain. Um, in all this, and like, um, I suppose there's, you know what? Give me, um, give me a cunning roll, please, Theo, because you asked, you asked about it. So I win. Yeah, getting back up that sinkhole in a hurry could be a trouble. Yeah, so I think I'll kind of, I'll, I'll kind of muster the group once we've kind of found a nice dry spot to set up and say, look, if that if that rain lets up, we need to be back on top of this pile, not at the bottom of it, because I don't want to be in a rush to get out of here. Not in this condition. Yeah, I hope this will be quick. Um, uh, Euphrinda hears you say that, and she's kind of standing there, ordering ordering the novices about, and she kind of puffs uh, on her pipe a little and says, "That's a solid idea. You, you, make sure if the rain stops, we pull the base camp back up." Quickly, and he's kind of like ordering them to light the torches and that kind of thing. So you friend us on it. You friend us on it, and if nothing else, she can be relied on to give orders. Exactly, <laughs> more like you friend. Uh, am I right? No, no, you're not. <laughs> so um, tell you what, why don't we have up? And I see John's already got it prepped. Um, why don't we have uh, Anton slash Mike's lovely map? of um, uh, the caverns under Thistle Hold. Would you like the central chamber or the full map? Full map, I have please. both. There we go. So there we go. We're in that main chamber in the center. Um, uh, anyone, obviously, I'll, I'll give a brief overview for, for any new people out there. But um, yeah, the, the, that south and east is kind of like seems to be fed by a hot stream. You've been down and around, although there's no ways further through. Uh, that mo furthest east chamber is where you fought the, the lizard things last time. Uh, but that seems to be a, a danger that mostly seems to have been cleared by now. Um, the passageways to the west, uh, while, the, while that southwest passageway hasn't been explored you're also fairly comfortable it just leads to a little spit of land in the same way that the one for the north did on the shores of that underground lake um the north passage seems to have been um where the beast clan slash clan jazora um have made their home um in some sense uh and there is a, a the western passage of that um crossroads that you have not yet explored and there is also that cavern further up that has a passage leading down to the southwest that you have not explored but you are fairly convinced that one or the other of those is going to lead back to the lake and to the promontory that furia saw and wanted to investigate that's that's it right that's a good summary that's all right yep yeah yep. yep. um, i suppose Marvello, we could, we could... Go for we it. could do this in character and just kind of be looking over the map with with Phantom, I suppose. Yeah, go for it. That'd be great. Marvello will be and Furia will be lurking nearby, but you guys take the lead. Uh, I suppose the logical choice is 
first left in the northern passage and see if we can delta run to the lake. Yeah, west of the crossroads. I don't really want to walk down the northern stream unless we have to. I suppose the other option is we go to the hot springs and dry off for the day and pretend we did a full day's work. <laughs> I think we probably have too many people watching us. Gosh, damn it. At least it will be dry underground. Drier. And I'm interested to know what secrets can be found on this lake promontory, but please don't disturb the lake surface unless it disturbs you first. Yeah, let's not throw more rocks. I, I suppose at this stage we will both cast a glance over to Aaron. Yeah, yeah, very pointed looks. Yeah. <laughs> Aaron I, I nods and takes no sort of pointed comment about it. <laughs> like, yes, I agree. Is 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 Fury a part of this? Like, is he in this huddle conversation? Yeah, he's that? he's he's certainly standing nearby and kind of <clears throat> observing your conversation, but he hasn't contributed anything yet. Uh, Master, what can we expect when we reach this lake? Hmm. Finally, someone asking the right questions. I confess, I do not know precisely, but there is something there, a source of something. I don't know of what precisely, but it is potent and it rings out through the ether like a bell. Okay. Sounds dangerous, sounds, but... Yeah, sounds ominous. I would caution you to be on your guard. I be. think we should have a, a relay of people positioned between the main chamber and where we're going uh, at intervals. Perhaps someone uh, on the northern passageway from the main cavern, someone at the crossroads itself, and then potentially someone further west down the passageway. So should things go awry, we can shout and yell and get a message quickly back to the main chamber. Um, Marvello kind of person. nods and says, that's not a bad idea. And here, if we end up going further to the north, well, that guard post should serve well. Yeah, I think we should use the guard post as well as spacing out along the corridors between here and there and the lake. All right, I'll ask one of my guards. Every time we hit an intersection, one of them stays. Okay, leaves us short-staffed if we come across anything too terrifying, but I suppose at least news will travel fast. I, I think the focus here, especially given the weather, should be to look and see what we can see and not plan to spend too long here. Another side glance at Aaron, but... <laughs> yep. Yeah. Shall we set off? Anyone else need to? Any other plans or voices that we can hear? And at, at this point, I'll actually cast a glance over to Yagaba just to see if there's any anything readable on her. She's a bit of a cipher, but her her face is completely unreadable. She is calmly watching you with uh, that veil kind of half descended over her face and, and no seeming emotion or expression. Well, I don't think we have anything to fear. We have the Dragon Slayer in our midst. Oh, no, don't. The, the, the people have been stood out there all day. They wanted to see something. They wanted yeah, to see it would have been something. <laughs> we needed the morale victory there. Come on, let's go. Um, you uh, stride forward to the north, heading to that passageway off the main chamber. Um, and uh, yeah, before long, you are at that crossroads. And I believe you said you wanted to um, sort of investigate that western passage first. Stephen, were you going to say something else? Uh, yes, while we're at the crossroads, if it's okay, I would like to see if which site has anything to tell me. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Go ahead and, uh, and make your roll. Uh, vigilant. Oh, yes, that is just scraped to pass. I, um, I got it. There's the same sensation and, uh, and vision you had when you first descended into the sinkhole of like almost like um, 
distended, half visible wisps of 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 um, you know magic or darkness or corruption moving through the air. But again, no no source directly nearby that you can tell. Um, but definitely, there's a kind of like almost kind of vibrating thrum to the air around you, uh, and you know that. If there is something here, you feel like you might be heading in roughly the right direction. Okay, so so would I be able to say whether that feeling is any stronger to the north or to the west, or is it just kind of everywhere? You, you think you maybe could, but you'd probably have to proceed quite a long way to the north or the west. Okay. It's, it's um, too subtle to be sure. Yes, definitely. Um, and as the group kind of strides down that western side of the crossroads, uh, you very quickly um, come out into what seems to uh, everyone there to be essentially um, living chambers. Um, so it is a uh, an extended passageway which has um, sorts of... It, it has three openings on the uh, left-hand or southern side uh, and four openings on the right-hand or northern side and one opening visible at the end. Um, the, the passageway is quite tight, so your group has had to kind of spread out a bit. So by the time you've proceeded most of the way down the corridor, you, you're all kind of scattered um, down that corridor, not standing too far from each other. Um, the walls um, show sign of like these areas have definitely been dug out a lot more than the previous ones. Um, much less natural. You can see kind of chisel um, chisel and uh, kind of uh, hand axe marks in the wall where people have like hacked away at the, at the s soft stone of the cavern walls. Um, yeah, um, I, won't, I won't go around going the first opening leads to... Um, after quite a short investigation, there are a lot of you there. You know, you can you can uh, investigate these things quite quickly. It becomes apparent that these eight chambers are all essentially living areas. Um, the many of them seem to have kind of like furs in them for um, for sleeping on. Um, there is some rough furniture in some of them, some like very rough stools and chairs, um, even a couple of tables uh, that appear to have been fixed together. Um, there are scattered around numerous uh, kind of cultural items of uh, Clan Jazora that you can recognize. None of them seem valuable in any kind of intrinsic way. Um, and it seems like most of their possessions were, if they had any, were taken with them. Um, but there are is a large amount of sleeping space here for presumably a large amount of people. I, I would like to even approximate a, a number, if I can, to that. Um, I if it's just counting beds or counting one room's worth of beds and then multiplying it by eight. Or... Sure. You know what I'm going to ask you to do? I'm going to ask you to roll cunning, and I want to see I want to see if you pass two checks here, basically. So pa roll one cunning roll at a minus two and roll another one at a minus seven. Good you can God. use the same role. You uh, can use the same okay. role and just see which ones you hit. Oh, I failed. I failed both of them. Yeah, you got no idea. A lot. If you, if you want it as an idea, you can you can speak up and, and comment to someone who might be more might be more adept at the old the old. I think stuff. I, I'm yeah because I was gonna I was gonna mention it anyway. I'm just gonna say, God, how many people? This is a whole town. Uh, would it, is anyone else intrigued enough to to try and make the roll? So I was I was in yes is the short version. I was interested in looking around. The thing that I was looking for was not so much numbers, but can I get a sense of how recently this place was vacated? Um, sure. Um, so well, I'll tell you what, uh, Elindra, why don't you make that roll first? And that's just going to be a a cunning at minus two, I think. Um, okay. That's a fail. Um, <laughs> sure. Yeah, you, you've got no real idea. Is, is anyone else trying to examine for these for these questions? You don't have to. If you don't feel your character will be interested. Um, um, I think I'd be interested. I don't think I'll succeed, but I I was definitely thinking about how many people are here. So I'll sure. roll. Go ahead and make the roll. Um, nope, I failed. <laughs> <laughs> well then, you know what I will do. I will do one of those rare. Um, GM rolls 
for this. And I will see if anyone else uh, in the party was... Uh, well, I know who will have been intrigued enough to, uh, to ponder it and see if he can uh, solve that conundrum. Um, but I will just find his cunning there, which will presumably be quite high. Sorry for the noise, folks. Um, which will presumably be quite high. Uh, yeah, no extraordinary though, just 15. Um, so let's see what Furia comes up with from this. Okay. Um, Furia takes a kind of like pointed look around after Steo raises the question and says... Um, I would estimate perhaps he's kind of like, he's got a little uh, note that he's kind of like snatched off Ganderald and is like uh, reading because Ganderald has been tallying all these like bed furs and stuff like that. And he comes up with a number which um, is, I'm definitely not calculating something. Um, Approximately, perhaps, 170 souls. Takes a village. It's a lot of people. These were fairly large chambers, and the, the, the bed furs were really packed into them. Certainly into a couple of them. I wonder Not how many were life. killed on the day of the sinkhole. A few, but I don't think 170. No, they definitely move back. And is yeah, this a separate group from the abominations or the same group? And unless they, I mean, do abominations sleep? I, I don't recall seeing any barbarians coming out. Not things that were still barbarians, maybe things that used to be barbarians. Yes, former. There, were, there were definitely some of them who were closer to human than that still than others. I had been assuming that this tribe befell some kind of curse or magic to turn them into those things or the most potent of magic revenge i thought anton at the time said that he had a sense that the things that came out of the sinkhole were, had been created in some way that's not certainly the the feeling that i had at the time but I don't know enough about flesh crafting to to say what you start with. Did they start with men? I don't know. Certain texts seem to believe so. Furia, in case you were wondering. We should move on. We'll just be speculating standing around here. Um, everyone seems satisfied with this and uh, goes and heads out, back out into that crossroads and then strides up to the cavern to the north. Um, uh, Marvello leaves a couple of city guard um, standing at that guard post um, with with firm instructions to basically, if they, if they hear what sound like distressed cries or cries for help, they are to shout back to the previous people and then come running towards the cries for help. Um, so, yeah. That cavern, as I said, has uh, a sort of uh, almost a pool in the center of it and leading southwest from there, um, a, a kind of wider, a bit more formidable stream than the uh, the others back in the central chamber. Um, although it's not really affected by the rain here. You know, you're a long way from the rain coming down the sinkhole here. So it's as it was yesterday. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a wet walk down that passageway to the southwest, but not not a horribly uncomfortable one. You know, it's just you're going to get your boots wet. Um, and everyone is going to start striding down there unless there's anything else. Um, the passageway is um, fairly long and quite winding. Uh, at times, there's enough rock to the side to kind of clamber out of the stream, but mostly it's just a wet, unpleasant walk, um, and unsurprisingly, uh, it leads out to that huge, dark, still lake um, buried deep under Thistlehold. You can see uh, where you actually emerge is into the lake itself, essentially. Um, 
the the lake does not seem to be at least uh, where you are very deep at all and it's kind of up to your up to your shins as you wade out into it slightly from as the passageway kind of disappears behind you over to your right hand side is just what seems like you know the the shore of the lake essentially like stretching off into darkness to the north um and just to the south of you is a large promontory, a finger of land stretching out to the west, uh, which is very, you know, it's a few paces away from where you are. You can stride up onto it. Um, and Furia is kind of near the front of the group now, kind of not racing ahead, but kind of like very eagerly striding forwards up onto that promontory, uh, uh, keen to walk out to the end of it to the west. Um. May I make another witch site roll and see if there's a difference here compared to the passageways? Yes. Cool. Let's see. Yeah, past that one. Got uh, are you taking your you're taking your temporary corruption, right? Uh yes. Yeah. I took one for the Because this one. is the same scene, so um yep. that's fine. So um, as soon as you kind of your boots hit that promontory and you look out to where Furia is, as I say, he's not racing ahead. He's just near the front of the group, and the group are kind of like shaking out their boots and and kind of drying off a little bit. Um, you see something further to the west, um, out just beyond where the promontory looks to be ending, where the kind of feeble light of your lanterns and and torches stretch. There's something. Something in the lake, on the lake, that seems to be giving off waves of something. A shimmering in the air, like that vibration come to life, just coming off in slow, pulsing waves. Okay. It does not look healthy. I'm not going to say anything, but I will gesture to the others point to where I see the thing coming from and just indicate like there is a thing there at this point I'd like to try and cast blessed shields <laughs> go for it um, I'm going to make another roll for an NPC blessed shield has been cast because your um, your comment there, um, Alindra, about kind of telling the others, you didn't kind of say it out loud to everyone, did you? You kind of just to your group, sort of indicating. To um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm indicating that I, I, I guess I'm pretending that I've seen something, even though it's sure. not quite seeing. Um, what's your discreet? Uh, nine. Okay. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. So, um, after everyone has dried their boots off, um, kind of uh, you guys, presumably um, Marvello, Furia, um, Elfino, kind of like stride forward. Yugaba's kind of like not holding back, but definitely keeping the rear of the group. Um, Ganderold is um, sort of near her, kind of like shivering a bit in the cold down here and looking around and still scribbling furiously away on his pad to make notes. Um, as you all stride forwards, can everyone um, please give me a roll? <laughs> oh, I'm on the wrong tab. That would be why. Um, a roll of just vigilant, please. Flat, flat old vigilant. So yes from Chris. Yes from Thank Mike. You. Yes from Sam. Okay. So, Steo, Anton, and Askarai. As the three of you stride forwards, you hear something. And what you hear sounds at first like an odd humming noise ahead of you. And as you make your way closer, resolves itself quite distinctly. First, you hear that it is, it's not random humming noise. It's a melody. And then you hear that it's someone softly singing. Uh, a woman's voice ahead of you, and you guys definitely pick up on it first. But after a certain point, Aaron and Alindra won't be able to not hear it. And Alindra, it is most definitely the noise you heard or kind of thought you heard um, back it's on. Yeah. So we 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 heard a singing in the stream. Is it coming from the same place that the witch site is telling me as the focal point of? Oh yes. Yeah. Oh yes. This is. The um, thing. And, uh, but the, yeah, Steo and Askar and Anton, you definitely hear it first and, and, you know, enough that you can pass comment on it, uh, before most of the others have heard it. 
I think not so much comment, but definitely I will be readying my weaponry and and definitely looking much more on edge. Yeah. Can I like visibly see anything from where it's coming from? Just like, no, not at this point. You're you're maybe about halfway down this uh, down this promontory as it stretches out into the lake, um, and definitely like I, I think at this point, even people without which like can see that there's something ahead. Um, but the light from uh, the lanterns and torches seems not kind of like oddly dim. It's not going out or anything, but like it's almost like the light is being suffocated by something ahead. There's something that is not allowing light to be cast on it terribly easily. A couple of like the the guardsmen you can see are kind of like nervously making the sign of of Prios in one hand, um, and you hear kind of like as you move forward, Elfino um, stood kind of like in the center of the group is um, kind of starting to murmur sort of reassurances and prayers to Prios. And like uh, one of you kind of further near the back, let's say with a random roll. I'm not saying you're at the back, but you're a bit maybe further back than the others. Of course, I rolled a d5 and rolled a six. Um, twice in a row, this literally always happens. There we go. Um, Askarai, you're maybe just a couple of paces behind the others, uh, and you see one of the city guard kind of like hot, falter a little bit and just kind of like shudder. Um, there's no kind of, you know, magical effect washing over the group or anything, but just that the fear has has kind of overcome him for a second, and you see Alfino kind of reach out and kind of like rest his hand reassuringly on the, the young man's back and murmur something to him, and he kind of nods and they stride forward together. Um and Tom, can you please give me a lawmaster check? Oh, hang on, that's close. Uh, oh, I missed by one. Sorry? Failed by I one? missed by one, yeah. Okay, because that's a near miss, I'll give you something. Um, the voice is singing in a barbarian dialect you do not understand. but it is definitely related to the existing clan dialects that you are familiar with. Okay. Uh, so I'll whisper to the group. Sounds barbarian. The language. I can't understand it, but that's what it sounds like. Um, do you say that loud enough for people beyond your kind of immediate friends to hear? You're on, you're, mute. you're on mute. Sorry, Mike. That that's how quietly I was saying it. That was just you know me role playing with the mute thing. Um, <laughs> uh, no, yeah, I would say it loud enough for for like one of the masters to hear, probably because they would be the people who would really benefit from knowing that. Sure, absolutely, and um, it's up to you whether you're glad you did. Uh, you did because as you as the group strides forward, a quiet voice speaks from the back of the group. Um, Yagaba, the only one with with no weapon drawn, um, walking kind of forward. Uh, her veil, she's kind of pulled her veil back, and she's gazing out through the group towards what you're what you're walking towards, seemingly not really looking at the the people in between. Um, and as she strides forward. Um, she says quite quietly, fathers, mothers, young and old, left us here in the dark, in the cold, running, fighting, all life ahead. I would rather remain here with the dead, silent, frozen, never dry. I am alone left to sing, alone left to cry. This does not have a heartening effect on the group. No. <laughs> but it is amazing that it still manages to rhyme in common. <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> Maybe Yagaba is transliterating it to allow for rhyming. Be... As things were often done. Hmm. Which is why they were so badly translated. <laughs> I'll say, is it the language of Grand Zora? Yes. 
Uh, well, she will be pleased to see us. You, uh, as a group, reach the end of the promontory, uh, and ahead of you, y you can see something out on the surface of the lake, not too far ahead. Um, and the promontory kind of sinks below the dark waves, and um, you can see, like, down there, like, it, again, the lake is not deep here. It is definitely wadeable. Um, and uh, the group kind of draws to a halt. Furia um, kind of uh, turns to one of the, the city guard and says, Your torch. Your torch. Uh, the city guard looks reluctant to give up his torch. Is it? Does anyone have a torch? Or are they going to pass it to Furia? I don't have they one, going but to I provide have one it? in my pack, so I will get out a, a kind of spare torch and pass it, light it off the guards and hand it to Furia. Sure. Uh, he takes it and takes a few strides to the very end of the promontory, kind of the front of his shoes are being kind of like soaked by the ever so slight waves of this, this underground lake. And he kind of holds the torch forward over it. And there you see glittering on the surface of the lake, not too far ahead of you, maybe about 30 feet through wadeable water, you see an island, a black island formed of some kind of mineral or a quartz or a crystal, and it is so dark and black, it is uh, just absorbing, soaking up light from your torches. Um, there is no sign of kind of like, you can't see anyone standing or, or on the island, just the kind of like jagged shards of it protruding uh, up above the surface of the water, uh, but you can see the smallest wisp of smoke coming from somewhere at the center of it. Do we do we get any sense of how large this island is? Yeah, it's it's not large. Um, let's say it looks to be maybe here is where my terrible, terrible um, measurement. I, I'd say it's about you'd say it's about eighty meters by eighty meters. So it's not huge, but neither is it like a tiny, tiny chunk of land, you know? Okay. Um, so that's the mystery of the lake solved. How about we leave and never come back? Somehow I don't think Fierio will Are be... Are you mad, sir? <sighs> Does the island look natural? I'm just thinking because Aaron has precedent with large ominous rocks. He does. Oh. Um, it doesn't look carved. Okay. I'll say that. It looks like a very odd and unusual outcropping, I suppose. Nothing else here is made of this material, whatever it is, this crystal, this quartz or mineral or whatever. And it's uh, I think I've already, you know, it's coming out in those kind of like geometric shards, right? That that, that these things um, have a tendency to form. Um, so I'd say, it, yeah, you think it looks fairly natural, but very out of place. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. Um, is, is... I, do... I suppose there's no point in trying to figure out what kind of creature of the depths of Davakar can sing with a voice. It's probably a person or was a person. I think Yagaba may know. Is Yagaba about? Can we ask her? She is. She stood kind of behind the group, kind of just gazing stoically expressionless um, at the, the island on the surface of the lake. Uh, her eyes glance to you for a second and she says, the song tells the story. She is one who remains. The others have gone. We don't need to interrupt this I agree I will also say we are down here investigating the cause of the sinkhole opening I think we have good reason to believe that involved in that somehow um, was Clan Jazora or 
something they made or something that was made of them. Can we leave this? Marvello kind of shakes his head and says, I, I do not think we can. I trust your judgment, Sergeant, but we, the, as the Templar says, we, we came down here to Templar. cleanse this place to, to ensure there is no danger to Thistlehold. Furia kind of gestures across and says, and there is a power across there, gentlemen, I can assure you of that. I think whatever um, this thing is, it may be the thing that made the sinkhole, or certainly is is powerful enough to be a significant part of what's happening here. I excuse yeah. me, lady, lady witch. Can you sing back to her? I can could speak to her if I had the desire to do so. But your actions down here are your own. I am not going to intrude. Disturbing things from the forest is not good. Disturbing things beneath the forest is also not good. But if we this... insist on turning this island over... I don't think good will come of it. But this isn't beneath the forest. This is beneath Thistlehold. Furia kind of looks around. It seemingly, he, he looks a little bit um, upset that having come to this point, people are considering turning back. Uh, and he says, a very good point, young sir. And might I suggest... Master Steo, you did not have this attack of conscience when you were being paid to go out into Davakar to look after runes for the Order Magica. Not until I find the entire camp murdered, I didn't know. <sighs> Would look. I know if it's possible, just practically, to light an arrow and fire it to where this place is? It's, it's definitely within range. Easily within range, yes. Well, you, okay. you think to like illuminate it a bit more, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you think you could hit the shore, like not like get it lost among like the jagged, uh, you know, geometric shapes and, and and stuff like that. You think you could hit, yeah, where it comes up out of the lake and and get a like a long burning, you know, you just need to get a rag and soak it in and it wouldn't go out, it would just land and burn. Okay, I will, I will suggest that I could uh try and get some light over there. You you want to you want to open proceedings with whatever's out there by firing a flaming arrow at it. Well, it's that or walk across into the darkness. Neither if those are our choices, options. I'll take walking into the darkness because at least there is a possibility that whatever is there can be encountered peacefully. I'm not quite as optimistic as you, Alindra. You've spent more time in the forest than I have, which is, well, none. Well, Look, we need to also remember that that water is filled with what are probably also going to be enemies, given our luck. But I suppose the master has a point. And I suppose we have a stretch of water to cross. Rhea nods and says, well, I'm glad you've come to your senses. Come, Captain, Father. He steps out into the water. Uh, I... Father Alfino kind of look, definitely looks more cautious, uh, but steps out behind him. He's drawn kind of, he's got a large, let's go kind of traditional um, European and fancy and say that Alfino fight, fights with a mace, shall we? Uh, and he has that drawn and he's stepped out. Marvello uh, steps out with the city guard and like, uh, as, like, as I realize as I start the sentence, you'll go, oh God, as soon as everyone sets foot in that lake, it is very obvious that it is very, very cold, even more cold out here, um, because everyone just 
shivers run through them like stepping into ice water. Uh, and as soon as any of you make that step as well, you will feel the same way. Um, so um, is anyone remaining on the shore? What's was... Yagaba doing? Yagaba is remaining on the shore. <laughs> I, I, I'll bravely volunteer to remain on the on the shore. You know, I'll take one for the team here. Um, I will also remain on the shore to uh, guard Father Antom and Yagaba. <laughs> I, I need to go across because these hotheads may not be acting diplomatically. Yeah, I, I was going to suggest that we we spread out over that 30 feet be, between here and the island, but um, there are not many of us, so maybe we just need to accompany the party that's going to the island. Uh, and like I say, like un, you know, the deepest it seems to be be between here and the island is maybe up to kind of just above the knees, the thighs. So like walking through it is quite quite easy, and the, the distance is quite quickly crossable. Um, I'm going to stay a few feet behind the party that have that have, have made the crossing. Like I'm, uh, and either you know, probably stay next to the island, near the island. But um, I think whatever's about to happen, I want to. I want to see it happen to them before it comes for us. Sure. Um, as as you say, like the group is spread out. Uh, Marvello and the city guard are the first to step foot um, on the uh, the um, the kind of crystal island, um, and nothing immediately happens as they do so. Um, other than they don't look happy and they look kind of very warily looking around, and everyone can hear as as kind of they step foot. The singing just stops in a little kind of drawn out, not a wail, but kind of like a, a kind of. Arr. As uh, as the, the the rest of the group are kind of making the crossing, like Elfino has stepped onto the the shoreline now. Uh, Furia stops about halfway through, having kind of like basically just like watched everyone across, and turns back to the the kind of promontory and calls out in kind of a, a loud whisper. Father Anton, you would deprive me of another translator. Ah. Uh... Okay, I'll start to wade over. Yes, that's it. Good. Good lad. Come across. Come across. You need a, a bit more curiosity in your soul. Aaron? <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have to at all. <laughs> just like Anton, I... you know, I'm not I'm not railroading. I'm just um Fury just wanting Anton there. Uh I, I will I I will stay. Uh, I will. I will declare. I shall uh, stay with the the good lady. She she shows no indication of of really being that aware of your presence. You're a lot more cautious than yesterday, Aaron. I yes. Well, there wasn't a large, ominous island emitting smoke yesterday. And there, singing, there was. I you mean, just couldn't see it. There was, yes. Um, so, Anton, you uh, you make the crossing as well. As soon as those people, Fury just kind of like shrug, looks back at Aaron and Yagaba and shrugs, and then um, kind of uh, goes up behind everyone. Um, everyone. The first time you set foot on the Black Crystal Isle, you feel something some kind of like having uh you know someone's walking on your grave something is is wrong that vibration that um Belindra could see in the air just courses feels like something passes through you goosebumps appear on your arms uh, and your neck and there's just the feeling that something isn't Right. Um, yeah. 
Uh, everyone is standing on that that crystal shore, and that crystal, you know, it's it's not as smooth as it looked from the promontory, but it's quite hard to get a good footing on. And kind of people's boots are kind of squeaking slightly as as they try and maintain a, a, a foothold. Um, out in front of you, there are a number of these kind of shards coming upwards, and some more rubbly sections where bits of rock and uh, like cracked crystal just form a kind of like more even footing. Um, you can't see where the voice was coming from but that's that small curl of smoke is still coming up um from some some distance ahead to, towards what looks like the center of the island right we're here we're doing this looking to steer and anton i'm okay, very looking on slate only <laughs> Furia says, yes, yes, of course. This is what we're here for. Ganderold, close attention. I want copious notes. Ganderold is just kind of nodding and just shivering as most of you are and is kind of noting things down. Um, he kind of, like, Furia points at where, like, a shard of the crystal has just, like, fallen discarded onto the ground and Ganderold looks at him a bit un unsure of himself and bends over and kind of picks it up. And seems to feel no no significant ill effect, so just kind of like pops it in a pocket of his robe. Kind of muttering, um, curiosity is dangerous in the forest. It's a feck of death sentence underneath it. Um, being as he's he's been interacting a lot, John, why don't we get a, a picture of Furia up to remind everyone what he looks like? Um, yes, so uh, Marvello again uh, leads leads the way forward and starts kind of, I'd say striding, but like I say, moving around the surface is really very, uh, very difficult. And everyone is having to struggle to keep their footing. Um, although none of you are kind of in too much danger of taking a tumble. Um, as you stride forward, that feeling of something being wrong, something being, maybe the best word is dissonant. Um, starts to wash over you all and can everyone please make a resolute test does that include me on the shore or no that does not include you on the shore i make it i just made it Dio made it Asgara made it i needed 11 i got an 18 well then can you roll me a d4 please sure two Take two temporary corruption. Oof. Okay. I'm uh, hoping that doesn't take you to your corruption threshold or beyond, or beyond it, rather. Uh, no. No. Not, not yet. Because you did have two <laughs> from your witch site, right? So. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, just out of interest, how? We, so you're on four temporary corruption now, I guess. What's yes. your What's your my, threshold? My threshold is six. Okay, so that's not too bad. You could take another two before um, things start turning a bit a bit. Chaos spawny. Um, so, yeah, everyone is making their way forwards. Um, as I say, it's not a large island, uh, and it is not a long journey um, towards the centre of it. And as uh, the front people round uh, a corner where a huge kind of pointed jagged shard of crystal um, erupts from the ground, uh, let's have a, a lovely little roll of, uh, let's say that... One of you is one of the first people to um, come in sight of the individual at the center of the Crystal Isle, and that is Steo. You uh, round this uh, shard coming out of the ground, and ahead of you is um, a very, very small and modest fire. Uh, built into the the kind of um, or placed on kind of the the crystal and stone rubble of a kind of slightly open patch at the centre of this aisle, um, and it is giving off that wisp of smoke drifting into the air. And as you round the corner, um, it looks to you at first that there is no one there; that this uh, fire is is abandoned. Uh, but then the glow from your uh, the torch, either your torch or the torch of someone near you. Um, almost seems to roll over the individual and kind of uncover her as like the the black crystal around that's sort of soaking up this light. Maybe it 
stops doing that or maybe she just moves forward um it's very difficult to tell but either way facing you is a crooked hooded crone um covered in uh their odd um symbols and face paints um who is ogling you all with disdain written in her eyes and we have an image of her which john will put up for us there we go. Um, she l- looks odd, but not immediately visibly corrupted. And she is just glaring at all of you as people kind of slowly emerge. A couple of the city guard kind of uh, come up kind of at a halt when they see her and kind of make the sign of Prios again uh, before Elfano kind of gently guides them forwards. Um, Marvello stands to one side, um, Furia kind of to the other. He's kind of glaring at her curiously and running a hand along the sort of grained, uh, like sort of smooth, sort of grained surface of a nearby crystal, sort of curiously examining what comes off on his fingers. Uh, Marvello is just kind of standing, sword and shield, kind of looking across at Master Furia, Father Elfano, and, uh, and at you, you know, with more experience of dealing with the unknown than he does and just kind of says a soft word and the city guard kind of rank up behind him. Uh, Serex Atio is also stood to one side with his huge great sword over his back. He seemed to have no interest in any of these proceedings, um, much less curiosity or fear. Can I uh, offer a couple of words in Odav? I think we just sure. really barbarian tongue that I know. Sure. Um, she, uh, the uh, old woman kind of peers around at you and makes a, a kind of slightly dismissive, slightly disapproving kind of noise with her mouth. And then she starts to speak to you. Um, she says in very broken Odav, Um, to the point where I think I'm going to ask you to make rolls if there's anything, any complex concepts that either you or her have to get across. Uh, But she she asks you why you have come to her home and disturbed her in this way. Well, uh, because of the sinkhole and the fighting that came from it, That's why we're here. You come to finish what you started. No. This group is here to understand. Understand what? Your making of war? Uh, I think I'll like if it's okay with with you, Matt. I'll just translate this to the rest of the group. Yeah, as, yeah, as absolutely. We go. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, we we don't want to make war. We don't intend to fight. But the beings that came from the sinkhole. They threatened the town. You cannot open a door to where we live and claim it was not your aggression. You tried to kill us all once years ago. We live down here, 500 men, women, and children. Then you make the sky crash down on us, and you claim that we are the ones making war? We didn't make the sky crash down. We don't know why that happened. And the your people, I don't know how to explain this. 
in ODAV. I probably need to roll here, but like I want to ask her like about the flesh crafted beings that we saw because they presumably they don't look like her or they, they like she doesn't look like one of them. No, she doesn't. No, she looks like a. She doesn't look dissimilar to a much healthier version of one of their witches that you saw. Mm. Okay, who were who were definitely less. They were kind of self mutilated, but they weren't. They didn't seem too thoroughly corrupted. But I think, yeah, you, you, yeah, go on, go ahead and make a make a cunning roll. You can add a like a plus two to it because I don't think it's too tricky a concept. It's tricky for Ansom. He's rolled a sixteen. Okay. Yeah, she just looks in kind of wrinkles her brow in confusion at you and makes another one of those sort of tutting sort of noises and says, We are all that is left of Clan Jazora. We come down here and huddle against the... And it, it, there's a weird concept she kind of tries to get across which almost translates to you as warm cold the warm cold of the isle sheltered them it gave them the hardiness they needed to survive alongside the the leadership of Haliban's daughter Helianor and then you attacked and they escaped to the north through the tunnels She didn't see a reason to flee. This is her home. You're on mute. Just because of the third time tonight. Um, so what came forth from the sinkhole if you fled north, if your people fled north? She looks confused and just says, you. You, okay. you collapsed our home. We had I, to I, fight I, to defend ourselves. Okay. The warriors held a rear guard while the others fled north. Ask her if it was the warriors that came above ground out of the sinkhole. Or assuming that you've translated this back. I, I want to understand what she means by warriors. When the sinkhole, uh, when the ceiling, when the sky crashed down, did the warriors come, come up and fight? Yes. They are more used to the surface, to the forest and the lands above. They have had to range out before. I think you should know, and I've said this before, but that sky falling down was not an act of war or aggression. I think I speak she, for the party she, when I... She shrugs and tries to get across a concept to you. Can you roll cunning? Uh, or I think I missed by one. Yeah. Okay. You don't understand, but she seems to be dismissing your argument in a manner in which she's not um, disagreeing, but she she's talking to you like you're a child to be educated. Okay. But you do not understand what what you you, you are not capable of understanding what what she means when she says that you know it was aggression um some of the some of the things that fought our men they didn't look like you no what they are warriors i told you this the island makes us strong Um, as you kind of translate this back, Furia leans into you and says, ask her more about the island, about what this is. This may be the source of it, Father Anton. They may oh. be unwitting accessories to 
to the power here. I'll nod towards the, the smoke and ask about this place. It, it, she shrugs about the power. Um, and then starts talking to you. Can you roll cunning, please? And you know what? You can take a plus one here because you know you know you at least know the specific topic that's being talked about. Yeah, I made it. Rolled a four. Okay. The information I'd have given you anyway um, is she says that this island here long ago was linked to something she calls the pure magic, but that it now works as a pathway to the eternal night. She also refers to the island in what her tongue seems to call it, um, which the best translation you can come to is blackened power node. Okay. She then says, but it is not for you. You cannot tame this. It is my home. It is mine. If you leave and do not send anyone else, there will be no reprisal from me. I am just living here. Well, I'm, I'm not going to answer on... I'm, I'm, I'm just going to avoid answering that, I think, because I don't know what Furia and Marvello want to do. Uh, yeah, so, I, I hope you'll at least translate it for us, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. You, you, I mean, just, just assume that everything <laughs> that she has said has been translated as we go. I think we're done here. I would agree. I would There's ask no her. I would ask her if we can expect reprisals from Helianor and the ones who escape. Uh, are you going to ask that, Anton? Yeah, I'll ask that. Sure. She says, "I nothing. No, they are fleeing for their lives." Though if you encounter them, I would not expect mercy. No, I wouldn't expect that. A kind of... Um... Anton, should we ask about the greater darkness from the forest? You mentioned this node. Are there more? What do they connect and what is this greater darkness she shrugs and says of course there are more there are always more of everything more of you every day leave now nothing for you here stop others from coming down and I will do nothing Um, as this is translated back, Furia is kind of looking around. He leans over and whispers something to Father Elfano, who looks sort of kind of torn. Um, uh, Elfano says, Father Anton, a word. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'll take myself off to join him for... And he, he talks, and he talks loud enough for kind of the group to hear and says, Master Furia here makes a good point. This is clearly a corrupted individual mastering something that she describes as a power node beneath the city of Thistlehold. She is threatening us by a mission of threat. Can she be allowed to remain here? I'm not proposing we kill her out of hand. She's a frail old woman but perhaps she can be taken above and questioned further about this clan Dezora. I understand from what you say, maybe there was some kind of forced misunderstanding here and maybe this, this clan Dezora was frightened into their attack on the city, but that does not stop the fact 
that hundreds of men, women, and children died, and that there is this node of corrupted power beneath our feet. Now, Master Furia here, as obviously intellectually curious as he is, and Furia kind of d doesn't look phased at this this kind of like sort of sideways accusation, um, may have ulterior motives of the pursuit of knowledge, but captain you fellows from the agency surely our duty here is to at least remove this threat peacefully night pitch will not be comfortable with the notion that we cannot send anyone further down the sinkhole because we have ceded it to a single old woman i think if you want to learn more then this person is here and, and does not wish anyone to come down again. Uh, I suspect she does not wish to be removed forcibly from her dwelling either. And I see no dwelling, simply a barren spit of crystal. Captain, you must see the, the folly in this. Uh, Marvello also looks a bit uncertain uh, and says, I, I I, don't think the mayor will want us to just leave this place. Is there yeah. any contribution yeah. from anyone who's not Anton? Yeah, I think I think Elinja would have been like visibly kind of holding, biting her tongue, but would probably yes. Um, so what? This is this is about the 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 Sun Temple prison chambers are not full enough, and they need another one, or the uh, the the Ordo Magica needs something else to experiment on. Yes, hundreds died. How many Jizora died? when the sinkhole collapsed. How many Jizora died when Ambria was formed? If this is an opportunity to leave this be, why would we not take that? Uh, Elfano turns to you and says, I understand the law of compassion as I understood your sympathy for Savola. But there are greater things at work here, and the point remains that while this sinkhole is here, occupied by a hostile individual, the men, women, and children of Thistlehold are not safe. I know you would wish to ascribe my motives to some kind of colonial yearning, you know but nothing the of me. The, the fact is that these things are not mutually exclusive. What would you have done with her? I would have her removed peacefully to the surface and handed over to Mayor Nightpitch and his consort, also a witch and therefore presumably sympathetic to her situation, for them to determine her fate. Perhaps we should we talk only with... use the cells when someone is a direct threat to others. You've already described her as such. That is not for me to determine. It is for the governing powers of this city to determine. I am a servant. Perhaps we should talk with Yagaba. She is as close as we have to a governing power of this city down here and will give us the best insight into what Mayor Nightpitch would want. That's a very good point, Duskeray. I will submit to the wishes of the Mayor's consort. Marvello kind of takes a step forward and says, we can't just leave her. She's no threat to us, she said. No reprisals if we leave. Why did you even fight up the sinkhole? I think I'm coming to the view that she is a threat. I think she is not being 
um, du duplicitous when she says that she did not and her people did not cause the sinkhole. Her, perhaps the daughter, the winged one, may be that which is upset. But either way, the fact remains there is a source of corruption here and we are compelled to act by more than one master. But we should consult the consort. I, I agree we should talk with the Agaba. I think the biggest worry here is this source of corruption and power the this woman i mean whatever happens with her we need to find some way to deal and to avoid this source of corruption from being used by anyone and Tom, did you ask if she would perhaps accompany us back to the mainland to speak to Yugaba directly. That's a good suggestion. It serves two purposes because it'll also tell us if she's even willing to leave the island. You can absolutely turn and ask her that. Yeah. Um, I'll say to her that a member of our party, a witch, uh, is, is waiting for us just to a short distance away and I'll indicate where that is and ask if she will come and speak to her. Is the witch of Clan Jazora? I don't think I know what clan she belongs to. She almost certainly is not. Uh, I'll just shrug and say I don't know. So. Then she is a traitor as much as you are an aggressor. Leave my island now. If you return to it. I will take steps. Well, I'll translate that for everyone. Removing this woman peacefully is not going to be an option. In any case, I think... Um, I will head back and talk to Yagaba with whoever wants to come. Yeah, I'm getting off this island. I want no no part of this other than <laughs> to see what Yagaba says. Okay. Um, Elfano kind of nods and says, then I will come with you and I will also talk to the witch. And strides off. Everyone else is just kind of like standing around. Um, the uh the the clan Jazora witch i i don't think i've ever um you know i don't think she did introduce herself i don't see why she would so yeah you didn't why should she um so uh who's Le lindra Askarai, and elfano are, uh, are heading back to yeah you, you you know you head back and you stride um through the uh over the island and through that shallow lake to the shore where Aaron and uh Yagaba are kind of standing waiting. Uh, Aaron, if you've tried to engage Yagaba in any kind of conversation, it's really gone absolutely nowhere. Um, um yeah, and you you stride out of the out of the water shaking your boots off to Yagaba and Aaron. What happened? Where's everyone else? Did did you did you find did did you talk to the rock? Was it the rock? There's what happened? There. there is a witch on the rock. And Tom spoke to her. Um, <laughs> I suppose we need to, to, to like explain the whole sort of sequence of, you know. Um, they think we caused the sinkhole. There has been an enormous misunderstanding here i think they retreated to the north they sent their warriors up through the sinkhole to defend themselves as they retreated the witch would very much uh, like us to leave and not come back and said that there would be no reprisals if we did that the island is some kind of source of power some blackened power node some path to the eternal night 
um, and presumably was what made their warriors the way that they are. Um, Askarai suggested that we defer to Yagaba as the closest person to Night Pitch down here to see what she thinks Night Pitch would have us do. I kind of look around to the people that came across and say, like, is that a reasonable summary? Uh, Elfano nods and says, and it seems that removing her peaceably, or at least without the use of some force, is not an option, which I regret. But sometimes it is not an option. Is she doing any harm by staying here? If the sinkhole wasn't an attack and she wasn't a part of an attack or defense, has she this committed a crime? And I will look at the whole party, including Yagaba. Yagaba sort of draws back her veil fully and kind of uh, unveils herself. And let's have an image of her at this point, shall we? Um, and kind of peers across at the island, kind of takes a step forward uh, and then says, Night Pitch needs no corruption on his doorstep. The city of Thistlehold is buffeted by evils and threats. This place has a great power to it, and it will corrupt any who use it. She is here. She is occupying it. The threshold must be made safe. She shrugs. Remove her. Elfano kind of slowly nods and says, sometimes some harm must be done for others to be safe. But I will hold no grudge against you if you stand by your principles, novice. I turn to Yagaba and say, if we go back there and take her, what can she do? Will she pose a threat to us as we remove her? Yagaba says, I cannot see how she could be surrounded by such power and not pose a threat. Fear not, Templar. I will be with you. She starts striding forwards towards the lake. Go yeah, with that. Yeah, we said we'd defer to Yugaba. Aaron, you following them? I did not think I would be down here to evict an old woman, but yes. So, um, the however many of you, including Elfano, four of you, um, no, five of you? Five, because Five. of your garb as yes. well. Um, stride forward through the waters. Aaron, the first time you set foot on the Crystal Isle, can you roll a d4 for temporary corruption, please? Uh, do um, I need to do a resolute roll Oh, sorry, first? yeah. Sorry, a resolute roll first. Yes, absolutely. Phew. Didn't matter anyway. Didn't it was matter a d4, anyway. was it? Yes. Oh, uh, four. Perhaps it's because of the, the fear you had to cross over to the island initially, but walking through it suddenly seems to kind of transport you into a nightmare. You struggle to hold on to your thoughts. Maybe you have brief just sensations of um, voices on the edge of your hearing and like you blink and close and pinch your eyes for the second and see a tall grey stone monolith creeping up from under the ground and you shake your head and it's it vanishes. That moment is gone. You're not there anymore. It's it's fine. You're not there anymore. 
I think I might also have thoughts about whether this uh, what was what was the term that was used eternal 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 blackness. night yeah whether there may be a certain friend of mine that has ended up there through maybe similar maybe. similar means. If you're curious to know what all that means, folks, go watch our Simbroom spin-off series, Fetters of Stone. Um, story. So um, you all make your way towards that center. Um, the witch, as you kind of emerge out into there, and you know, I, I don't think Alfano is making it subtle. He's got his kind of mace drawn, um, and uh, you know, uh, Yugaba is striding forwards, and as she rounds uh, the the uh, that shard, big shard of crystal that kind of masks uh, the witch's little camp here, she's already kind of you can hear her whispering something under her breath, and her arms are moving in odd kind of disjointed um, contortions as she starts to weave some mysticism in the air. The uh, witch facing you all, kind of. Uh, I think the group is just kind of generally standing, prepared, hearing the footfalls of of your group returning, um, and the witch backs up slowly a couple of steps. Uh, her eyes flare up, and she kind of nods in realization and acceptance, and speaks a few words quietly. And Anton. Um, you don't have time to translate from what happens next, so you're the only person who hears and understands what she says. She mutters, come, my friends, come, my dead. And immediately there are noises from the edge of the lake, the shore around the Black Crystal Isle. Noises of things clambering squamously, wetly and loudly up the side of that crystal and swarming forwards towards this area at the centre of the aisle. Um, your group kind of like variously, like the different, the city guards kind of draw up together. Elfano kind of stands in the centre and is roaring at the top of his lungs. Stand firm, stand against what the witch summons for us. Uh, Yagaba is casting some kind of like mystical incantation. Serix Atio has grunted, tossed a, a, a half empty wine sack over to one side and is kind of like striding towards the noises coming from the shore with his great sword held kind of held back in the position of wrath. And um, yes, then they emerge between the crystals. They stride forwards. The dead, the wraiths, the spirits of the Beast Clan, um, moaning, groaning, and whimpering in hunger, naked and bone pale and swollen as if partly as if drowned by the dark waters, partly if, as if engorged by them, the thing you saw swimming under the surface of the lake, only there is more than one of them. At the moment, in fact, what you can see is, uh, he said, rolling a one on the number of them, um, but I will roll again because there's, I'm not going to retcon from, you know, yeah. Um, you can see four of them striding, but you can see the pale shapes further back. There are more of them coming. Um, John, I think we need an initiative order, please. Can you add to it um, wraiths? Um, and they are at uh, quick 13 and vigilant 10. Um, in fact, no, there's, sorry, there are more than four of them. There are four of them coming for your particular group, but there are more coming from around. That makes more sense than what I said. Um, so we need the wraiths in there, like I say, at quick 13 and vigilant 10. And we also need the witch in there at... Um, Quick seven and vigilant eleven, please. Um, and as usual, just add NPCs to the end for everyone else to do some description. How are we feeling about this? As John pulls together the initiative, Bad. I think <laughs> this is the first initiative where someone has gone after Anton. Hey. <laughs> I'm uh, delighted that there might be a slim chance I can use my polar mastery um, uh, at this stage because it has yet to see the light of day. Absolutely. 
also actually not happy about the outcome of having to kill someone who was not hostile to us. But sure, that's the dungeon life. Hashtag <laughs> dungeon life. Um, so we've got Askarai going first. Um, Askarai, what are you doing, friend? I am going to shoot at the witch immediately. Okay. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, well, why don't you give me um, a roll to do that then? Um, and that's against her defense, which is a minus one. Okay. I'll need a 14. I got a one. Oh. Please kill the witch. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. <laughs> so... <laughs> He's gonna totally so, Alindra. Gonna go totally Alindra. So that's um that's extra damage, right? That's um for a critical critical a hit, as it six. were. Perfect hit. Yeah, it's an extra d6 to the damage roll. So roll said damage roll, please. Okay, there's a d10 and a d6 plus one for my bow. I get 12 on the dice, 13 damage. 13 damage, you say. Can you take the initiative order off, please, John? <laughs> <laughs> um so oh, the uh the wraiths come forward um as i say groaning and whimpering and reaching arms outstretched for the city guard who kind of back off and kind of kind of hold their their shields up uh Serex atia roars and strides forward um furia um kind of uh, kind of moves back behind kind of uh, maybe you five as you, you kind of like ready yourselves for the wraith song coming. And he kind of spins uh, around to uh, Askarai and points with one kind of bony finger and says, kill the witch, kill the witch now. Um, Askarai, you were going to do that anyway, I think. Um, you take quick aim uh, and perhaps you feel a uh, same sense of the rush the, the moment of uh, rightness and um, sort of understanding exactly where the arrow needs to leave your bow, the sort of inv almost invisible connection between you and your target, the same way you did aiming at that um, corrupt and uh, begotten uh, vial of dark water deep in the tomb of dying dreams, um, and you fire your, your arrow. The witch stumbles back for a moment and you almost feel like perhaps you missed uh, before she looks up for a second the feathered shaft of your arrow up to the up to the feathers in her throat. A direct and mortal wound. She opens her mouth and says a few words. Nothing comes out but uh, a small spit of uh, blood and fluid. And Anton, you're not close enough and you cannot see well enough to perceive her dying words she tumbles forwards and before she hits the ground the wraiths carving their way forwards through the crystal isle dissipate and with uh, a last kind of almost odd sighing noise vanish as if nothing was ever there see i can turn a, a initial attack ending combat into a nice bit of description not all is lost. <sighs> so, I was just going to try and knock her out. Good shot, though. Thank you. I'm going to lie, everyone. I do not feel happy about any of these events. But good shot, Askrai. Now is it time to go. No, now is the time to investigate this island. And then we can go back to Night Pitch with more information. Furia looks around and says, Normally I would agree, Father, but it seems to me that we have spent a considerable amount of time on this island. Perhaps that is not wise. I'm with him. I do not want to be here anymore. The Ordo Magica, of course, expresses its sincere desire to investigate this curiosity and find the reason why these events occurred, whether the witch was lying or not, seems a moot point now. 
we would advise Mistress, he nods towards Yagaba, to recover the body and leave, and maybe we shall return with a small city guard contingent and the full force of the Order Magica to investigate this place. I'll um I'll already be on my way over to, to the witch's body to kind of somewhat tenderly kind of scoop her up. Um not looking she weighs all. almost nothing. There's no point in dithering on this island any longer if it's a threat to us. I Marvello just... kind of turns to Fury and says, is staying here a threat to, to my men, to everyone? Fury says, oh yes, of course. It is a place of power. Marvello goes, right, okay, then we leave. I am already leaving the island. Absolutely. Um, is it, it, I assume no one's staying on it. Nope. No. Nope. Um, you all managed to wade out to the island, maybe sort of catch your breath uh, and dry your boots off a little bit at least uh, before presumably returning to the uh, the base camp. There's no other reason to do to do anything along the way. Is anyone, is that the intention? Just kind of heading back. I would like to, on the the way back, have a, a quick word with Furia. Uh, good master, um, I, I am not educated in these matters, so I I may be incorrect, but it, it is possible that this bears some resemblance to a, a large rock I have seen in the forest and I have a friend at the agency who may be of use to you in further investigations if you would have a, another barbarian with you. Very well, of course. Have them have them brought to the Order Magica at some point. Very there good. are many places within the forest that may be connected, young sir. But any information is good information. Ganderol, let me see those notes. He's you got the impression he was only kind of half listening to you, and now he's kind of leafing through Ganderol, the notes that Ganderold has made. That's fine. I've got a job for a friend. Absolutely. Well, no. um, um, I would like to just uh, on on our way back, assuming we're back on dry land, I'll just kind of not court, go to Yagaba and, and ask her how best to to preserve the body in a way that is not profane for whatever rites of, of death will be afforded to her. Do not worry about that. When we reach the surface, ensure the body is handed over to Captain Marvello for safekeeping. We, we must investigate this further, Sergeant. I I understand this is difficult, but I assure you, sometimes little evils must be done. Uh, for a change, I'm I'm not going to respond to her on that one, and I'm going to just pick the feather light body up and carry on toward mm -hmm. the the pile. Um, so you return, you make your way back to the base camp in that chamber. Uh, the rain seems to have slacked off a little bit, um, but not kind of, not so much that the journey back up to the surface is not a, uh, a, a very unpleasant one. Um, is it, I assume everyone is happy to, to clamber up the ropes back to the surface. Um, I feel no need to, to, to make you roll for this. It, it's an unpleasant climb, and as you reach the top, the reduction in rain means that there are a few more people at the barricades, and again, uh, a great cheer uh, and cry goes up as you emerge. Um, this time, perhaps, I think it's safe to say, though, you are not feeling perhaps as encouraged by that cheer as you were yesterday. Um, upon reaching the surface, the group kind of huddles in the lee of one of the remaining uh, sort of semi-standing buildings nearby the sinkhole, um, and a few words are shared. Uh, the the Furia and Euphrinda say that they, they will kind of uh, happily work with Night Pitch in order to examine and, and determine what is going on down there with the Crystal Isle. Um, Marvello thanks you all for your efforts and assures you that payment will be forwarded onto you for your services down in the sinkhole. Um, 
El Elfano just kind of almost immediately like um, strides away after giving final blessings to the city guard and any of you who want them um, and uh, goes to, to confer with novices. Serix Atio um, uh, turns for a moment and looks as if he's going to, to walk away without a word and then at the last minute turns, uh, looks at you, Aaron, and says, I suppose we have to talk. Tomorrow night, come to the agency. I'll be there. There's too much going on to... Just come and talk tomorrow night. I he strides off. Nod. Um, can everyone please give me um, a vigilant roll? And I'm going to give you all a plus one because I feel like you're a bit more somber and calm and probably are kind of like trying to lose yourself in the, the environment, perhaps, maybe. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Go to, go to three. Everyone who succeeds, and I think that's everyone but Aaron. And you know what? That's kind of appropriate, because last time we saw her, I think um, it was mentioned, so maybe this time... Um, you're maybe looking out for her or maybe you just all notice her but across on the other side of the sinkhole standing there calmly and quietly by herself watching the procession of the expedition emerge onto the surface is the same middle aged red headed woman who watched the first time the, the, the activity was going on around the sinkhole um, Lysindra Golden Grasp. An old treasure hunter. Someone you wouldn't expect to be just out here. You know, someone fairly notorious, but notorious for having something of a change of heart these days. Stands there watching you, and she notices you noticing her, and gives you all a measured, even glance before turning and disappearing into the crowd. And I think... That is a very good place for us to leave this session. So thank you ever so much for watching, folks. If you've got any comments or questions, please sling them into the chat um, for us to cover. In the meantime, I will do my customary um, promo. So a uh, bunch of links down below, folks. There's YouTube and Twitch. You've watched this on one. Why not check us out on the other? Give us a follow, a like, a subscribe, all those those things, internet things. We're streamers, yes. Um, and uh, <laughs> also check out our social media, our Patreon, and our Discord that are linked below. They do all the things you'd expect. We've got a nice little community on our Discord. Come talk to us about role-playing things and stuff. Um, we run three weekly shows here. Uh, all of them start at 8 o'clock GMT in the evening. Uh, Mondays uh, for the next couple of weeks is going to be a fun little two-shot Call of Cthulhu thing set on a space station that Johnny's going to be running, and then Shadows of Esteran will come back in January. Uh, Wednesdays is this, Simbroom, which will continue until the sun burns out. Um, and on Thursdays, we're currently running Cincinnati Chronicles, which is a World of Darkness anthology series using the 20 anniversary editions uh it's a high concept thing five stories all set on the same day in the same city in 1995 hopping between uh five core world of darkness systems so we've already completed the vampire the masquerade story arc which you can catch up on in just four episodes over on youtube and tomorrow we'll be starting werewolf the apocalypse i'm very Yay. excited about it we are <laughs> chris is a member of cincinnati chronicles but it has like a rotating cast um and chris is chris missed the vampires and is coming in for the werewolf which is the exact opposite of what John is doing here. Um, but yeah, come join us tomorrow for, for uh, Cincinnati Chronicles. It'd be good. We also run uh, one-shots on the first weekend of every month. Uh, the next one is coming up on Sunday. This Sunday, that's the 5th of December. We'll be going live at 3 o'clock in the afternoon GMT, and that will be with a sequel to our previous one-shot of the Alien tabletop RPG from Free League. Um, the first one of those, if you want to go check it out before Sunday, is called A Place of Burning, and you'll be able to find it on our YouTube in our one-shots playlist. And this one is a sequel to that called A Congress of Sorrows. Uh, yes, this Sunday. Come join us for that. 
That's everything, right? That's everything. That's everything. Okay, what do we got there, John? What have we got comments-wise? Fling them up. Uh, good old hot beef trauma here. Um, that's Mike, if anyone's confused. Um, I'm here to have a good time, spelunk and roll bad dice, and I'm all out of having a good time. <laughs> Quite. Oh, poor thing. Just to, of course, uh, continue our, our vague... Um, constant illusions of wrestling because um, I'm sure Mike is aware that quote is from a wrestler and he's a big fan of wrestling, is Mike? I didn't know that and I feel dirty. <laughs> what? Yeah, I, I thought it was from Duke Nukem. Yeah. What wrestler says, I'm here to have a good time, Spelunkin <laughs> roll <laughs> <by five. laughs> well, that. I thought, I thought that quote was from They Live, which stars Rowdy Roddy Piper. Hmm. We're going to have to Google this. Satellite the, I could be very wrong. I could be very wrong. If it's if it's in the film, it certainly predates Duke Nukem, which was, I guess, riffing on the film. Then we've gone way off topic. This is we have. <laughs> I'm just stalling because I can't find the uh, the the next comment. <laughs> no, that's fine. Uh, Forty two. Uh, good to see you. The party goes forth to evict an old pensioner. Yeah, pretty much. Oof, though. That was some damn good evicting. Well, hey, um, it's, you know, in... Um... Hey! We're both right. It is from They Live, and Duke Nukem was quoting it from They Live. Uh... So, in other words, Mike, you like wrestling now. Congratulations. <laughs> that's, that's just the way it is. <laughs> oh. um, so there we go. Um, yeah, evicting an old pensioner. Well, um, obviously, regular viewers know that we're kind of like... Um, based, you know, Chris aside in this group, we're based in the United Kingdom. And what could be more United Kingdom in 2021 than evicting an old pensioner? That's depressing. Moving on. Um, Samuel, um, PB and BBB, Barbarian Bed and Breakfast Buffet Bar. Absolutely. That's what's over the door in a vintage carved wood sign. <laughs> We had a uh, somewhat prescient comment from Lowen at the beginning of <laughs> one of the short and brew Yeah, uh, I mean, fair. Um, that's you know, it, it's odd because I don't, I don't. Obviously, that was a bit of a gimmicky fight, and it was always going to be like kill the witch, um, save the day. You know, save the day, so to speak. Um, but like, yeah, I, I didn't mind it in the end because you know what, we had a long fight last week, <laughs> so it's good fine, to mix it up a bit. Yeah. Yet again, I have spent 30 gosh flumping XP on a skill that seems to be entirely useless in this Look, campaign. I promise at some point in this campaign I'll throw like 10 people at you. Right. You can you can you can you can do the thing. Um what else we got? Uh, while you're looking for that, actually, John, I think we did have a, a follower or two today. Um Yeah, we've had oh. two two followers. Um for some reason, me clicking on any of the tabs on my browser is just closing them. That's exciting. Um, thank you so... to Eric9968 and J96198. Who thank you. You're lovely people who just... definitely sound like you have bot names, <laughs> but I'm sure you're not. I'm sure you're lovely we'll people. Take... We'll take we'll the take numbers. It. We'll take it. Um, I'm sure you are lovely people, unless you're not. But maybe you are. Let us know. Hopefully. Um, let us know. Um, yes, I can't click on anything because it just closes the tab. That's exciting. Fun. Um, uh, a message from Steve. Nice work, Sam, on helping to keep the episode timing tight. Yep. Yeah. I, I told him to do that. Yeah. It was nice for me because my guilt at immediately ending the fight kind of echoed Askarai's guilt of like killing this of old doing it woman. At all. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. I just, just all kind of came together. Nice. Yeah, it's absolutely. definitely a bit of ethical soup, isn't it? Mm, mm, ethical soup. <laughs> Do they serve that at the breakfast buffet? <sighs> yes. No, it's the, for lunch. The the at the moral buffet. Um, one from one from Stephen here. I want a T-shirt that says "You're on mute, Mike," so you can just go. <laughs> Yeah. They were talking they were talking in the chat about how we don't have merch, and I think that needs to be the first piece of merch. I'm sorry, Mike. Sure. Uh, I, I nearly went to the comedy points of leaving myself on, on mute while, uh, while talking there, but it was too just obvious. Just a second there, I thought you were. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Um, oh, uh, Nightbite also points out that it was Roddy Piper, not... Did you say Roddy or did you say... I, I said Roddy, Roddy Piper. That's the reason I thought you said Macho Man. No. Mind oh, you. I'd love it if Macho Man Randy Savage had been in They Live. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, it was uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper. Do yeah. a serious uh, comment. Samuel, that witch killing scene was very beautifully built up and narrated. A real masterpiece of jamming. Thank you. Um, I did enjoy doing it. And then I, yeah, I've determined that now because sometimes you have the urge as a GM if if they just like kill something immediately to go, uh, but you really got, I think you've really got to fight through that and find a way to make it still narratively satisfying. And I hope I got there. I hope I got there. But just carrying on. I like the sound of my own voice anyway, so it all works. Anything else? Uh, no, that is everything. Other That's than Zara Crack Kid has posted a link to the scene we were talking about. Oh, to they very live. helpfully. Yes, wonderful. So. Um, lovely. So, thank you to everyone for watching. Um, whether you did it silently or you you chatted with us, we appreciate it all. Um, thank you to my wonderful players um, and. The one thing of promo -y or admin-related stuff that I forgot to talk about up until right at this very point, our schedule uh, for Simbroom over the last couple of months has been a bit rough. Uh, we thank you for bearing with us, but you're going to have to bear with us a little bit more um, because, and this is the first time these guys are finding out about it as well, I can't do Simbroom next week. I am off on work stuff. So, um, yeah, no Simbroom next week, I'm afraid. Uh, and that leaves us with, I believe, let me just check, but I'll, I'll give you an insight into our... Uh, that leaves us with one more episode of Simbroom this year. So we'll be with you on the 15th, on Wednesday the 15th, and then Telling Tales as a whole is taking two weeks off um, over Christmas. Um, so the week before Christmas and the week after Christmas we'll be gone from your screens. Mostly, I think, unless someone wants to run something like random. But I think all the regular games are taking downtime for those two weeks. So we won't see you next week, folks, I'm afraid, but we'll see you on the 15th um, for the last episode of Simba Room for 2021. So yeah, hope you join us then. Um, goodbye, everyone. Stay safe. Take care. Goodbye.